you are now experiencing the, the, the Digital Life with Kevin Lockett. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Digital Life. You know, I love summer. I love the warm weather. I love going to the park. I love watching bees getting busy with the flowers. So what better way to honor my pollinating friends than to talk bees, honey, and Kickstarter with Brent Wesley from the Akron Honey Company. Now, usually you don't associate bees with Kickstarter, but Brent took his skills as an apiarist, which is a fancy term for a beekeeper, and used Kickstarter to successfully raise funds for his honey-making startup. Also, for you music fans out there, Brent is a great singer. So we also took the time to talk about his retro 60s soul band, Wesley Bright, and the highlights. Brent is a great guy, and as you will hear in our conversation, his enthusiasm for his family, bees, and music is not only contagious, but inspiring. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Brent Wesley from the Akron Honey Company. Okay, we're talking to Brent Wesley. How are you today? Great. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm good. You know, we casually know each other. Uh Uh-huh. Because when I was researching uh, the Akron Honey Company, we were corresponding, Twittering, and all that stuff. And so I started yeah. doing my research. And then when I started doing my research, I figured, oh, okay, I know that guy. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's Wesley Bright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <In my life. laughs> then right. I said, no, he's even, he's even better than that because you used to work at Verizon. And yeah. I used to have a Verizon phone. And then I used to go to Borders a lot. And one of your former bands used to play at Borders. So I would Oh, yeah. Them. Yeah, yeah. So I would actually see you at a Verizon store complaining about my phone, but then I would chill out because you'd be performing across <laughs> across the way. <laughs> wow, I didn't even know that. I, I didn't realize that we had the, you know th- those you know that many connections. That's cool. It is. So I guess the biggest question is because I've always known you as a music guy. So how does a music guy who just lives and breathes music and still does end up with bees and honey? Oh my goodness. Uh... <laughs> kind of hard to, to answer that question. It just kind of, it, it just happened. It was, it wasn't, you know, calculated or anything. It, you know, I, I wasn't raised, and you know, in agriculture. I mean, it, it runs in my family, you know, and roots in the south, you know, farming and everything. But nothing up here. And uh, I, I mean, it just, I guess, I guess to answer the question, it, I like to, you know, stay busy and, and make things better, and you know, improve the community. And that's kind of, you know, that's a part of how it started. When you were younger, what did you do down south as far as farming? Well, my my family, like it's like my not my parents, but like the grandparents. They uh they hail from Barnesville, Georgia, and uh, you know they have you know a few hundred acres down there that that uh, have been kind of passed down through the generations. And um, they, you know, my grandmother and all her sisters, they they grew up on a farm and they they uh, you know had cows and you know, they just did the, the farming thing and and. Uh, they uh they slowly as they grew older they migrated to Cleveland uh, all of them actually get migrated to Cleveland uh, although they still have that land down there and uh, my parents came along and uh, they you know they didn't want us to they didn't want us to be farmers so I mean it, we kind of as in Rome we did as the Romans up in Cleveland that is uh, though and we just they got an education and got jobs but you know never really touched on you know, agriculture at all, but, you know, that I think everybody has a little bit of a, a green thumb or, or, or a knack to grow something, uh, whatever that may be, you know, whether it's like a, you know, a large garden or a small little patio garden, everyone's got a little bit of something like that. And I think that's what, um, you know, got me to, you know, get my own land and just, and just start in, in developing and improving it. So before you got into the bee business, you bought a vacant lot. And I read yeah. that you didn't know what to do with it, and then you eventually decided to do honey. But what were yeah. some of the ideas that you had before you decided to go with bees and honey? Oh, well, uh, you know, I, I, they were kind of uh, narrowly focused uh, a few ideas, and they were all centered on, you know, how can I improve the community, this this, this little community. And, and uh, you know, I guess we're, we're formally known as a part of Highland Square, but the actual name of this little neighborhood is Crestland Park. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I always thought, how could I benefit this Crestland Park? And, you know, I thought about doing a, you know, it's a community space, uh, you know, uh, urban farming, uh, community garden, um, you know, anything that involves groups of people that could come in and uh, go to a place and um, and just learn and, and, and uh, see, feel, you know, I guess – 
uh, how should I say, you know, find a way to, uh, and discover ways that make their place better and, and giving their, themselves a reason to brag about where they live. Um, so just anything having to do with grouping of people and improvement of space. So you decided to get into the honey business. So yeah. as the story goes, you went to Kent and you got these bees and um, you were driving back from Akron. And yeah. usually the story jumps from you getting the bees and now you, you become, was it Aphrius, as I say it, uh, it's Aphrius? They say, uh, you know, beekeeper or uh, apiarist or, you know, um, you know, studying apiculture, but I mean, it, it, there's a beekeeper is 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 uh, the common term, I suppose. Okay, so you become a beekeeper. So what was that first transition like? Because okay, so you're taking the bees out. You got this land. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that like when you said, okay, I'm taking the bees out of the car, and now I need to do this? <laughs> well, um, ah, yeah, the the story begins in you know, I guess in Kent, Ohio, where I. I you know, I I I was with my um. First of all, I had some really strong mentors. I had you know uh, a young lady named Sarah Smithers. She's a local a local bee whisperer of, of sorts, and uh, Laura Urban, who has her own um, business, uh, Urban Honeybee. She's like she's out of she's out of you know the Akron area also. Um, and uh, I had those two mentors, and Sarah and I uh, went out. I, I finally you know decided what I wanted to do get these bees, I was going to start with two colonies. And so I go out to Kent and uh, we, we, we pull up to this, this little, uh, little house that has a, a lot of acreage uh, around it. And a uh, old uh, rusty old man comes out. He, uh, you know, shows us through his apiary and he's not very kind at all, but I mean, he's a beekeeper. Uh, that's what he does. So he, uh, he points out the two, the two hives are going to take. And, you know, that's when kind of reality hit me that <laughs> I got, I've got these. I've got you know fifty thousand bees per hive that I'm going to be transporting back in my in the, in the trunk of my car. So we get them in my car, and and you know I kept my bee suit on the whole ride home, just not realizing, mm-hmm. <laughs> not realizing that I was fine and nothing was going to happen. But I we we took them back, and every bump we hit, we we hit, you heard a, a, a resounding just you know just as them they're stirring up in the back, and um. You know, we got them back, got them back to uh, my um, my little my little plot of land, and uh, we just set them up. And after that, I mean, it's just a bunch of l- uh, learning situations that continue on today, and and will continue, con- you know, continue to be found uh, over the next several years. What was your wife and your kids' uh, response when they saw these gaggle of bees <laughs> buzzing around when you brought them home? <laughs> Well, uh, in the 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 plot, the vacant land is, that I own is is about a block from my house. So you know, I, I brought them back, and then I, I finally took them over, and they were a little bit reluctant to you know go close to them because I mean, most people think that the bees are are you know coming to get you. You know, the, they're you know if they're flying around your head, they're about to sting you, and you're about to be attacked. But that's not the case. Um, we, you know, when we went over there, they like I said, they're a little bit reluctant. But you know, as time went on. You know, not only my wife, but my two little girls, seven and three years old. They, they, um, they were just fine going around the, the hives. They don't, I mean, they don't, they don't really care anymore. They just go over there, and you know, if we're gonna go, they go pick uh, berries from the mulberry tree, and don't even mind the hives, and everything's fine. I mean, they've never been stung or anything before uh, at my apiary, at least. And, um, but uh, they, they, they enjoy it. They, they enjoyed it, and they really, they really embraced it because I mean, I gotta get. A lot of props to my wife because I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be doing this at all if she didn't give me her blessing. She just she just she's awesome. She just lets me do what I need to do, and and uh, you know she stands there and supports me and just allows me to do it. I'm still trying to get that image <laughs> of you driving with the beekeeper's outfit. <laughs> I can't imagine what type, of, what type of looks people were giving you while you were driving <laughs> with this outfit on down the highway. <laughs> You know, I, you know the whole time it, it it opens a different perspective of driving when you've got, uh, you know, uh, about 160, you know, or 110, 160 thousand bees in the back that are armed with stingers and mad that you're taking them in this car to some place that you know they don't know what's going on. They just know that their their environment is being disrupted. And I'm just thinking, please don't hit a bump. Please don't get in type of any type of car accident because it's gonna be it's gonna be pandemonium after that. Whatever it, it looked pretty. I don't even know how it looked. I mean, it was just 
it, time went, time seemed like it stood still at that at that time. But you know, as I look back and you know hindsight twenty twenty, uh, it, it was pretty quick. It took about thirty minutes to get back, and you know there was you know, we reached that we got back to acting without incident. So you know we arrived safe and sound, and so did the bees. I saw um, Adrian Grenet from my Entourage. She was on with Alex Wagner, and he had uh-huh. a documentary out about bees. And I did not know that we need bees to be buzzing around. We need bees to pollinate because basically if bees disappear, basically we disappear. Yeah. Uh, I've heard, I've heard that several times. I, you, you've seen, you know, there's also been quotes that have been floating around the cyberspace, you know, uh, that I you know uh, allegedly by I, Albert Einstein saying that after, after the bees are gone, we have 10 years to live. You know, I've heard all sorts of quotes, but it, it it's true at the least. And, and I don't have, I don't have, you know, a book of empirical data to, to back this up, but I know for a fact that, you know, the things that they pollinate really do uh, play into our, uh, the, the, the economy and our, just our, you know, how, how the, the variety of foods that will be available. And if they were to be gone, I mean, I, I envision a world that's really, you know, kind of like, you know, like a, like a dried up leaf, you know, just kind of brown and tasteless and boring, um, you know, on top of not having honey, I mean, that's that's really what 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 uh, brought life to or led to the Akron Honey Company was just the first batch of honey, which you know I'm sure we'll talk about later. But um, it you know it, it, it we'd be missing out on a lot, and it would be all our fault, you know, if if that were to happen. Let's talk about the Akron Honey Company because the the reason why I reached out to you because my my show is basically like a social media tech podcast, and mm-hmm. I find it pretty amazing that. Um, you use Kickstarter to help fund your company. And, and p- when people think of startup companies, they just think of technology. But, I mean, technically you do have a startup company. So what made you decide to use Kickstarter to help uh, fund your company? Well, uh, Kickstarter uh, is something that I found uh, a lot of folks with passion used as an instrument to to uh, make these dreams come true and uh, benefit the masses. And not only these people who start these campaigns are passionate, but the folks who are contributing contributing and, and backing is what they call it, backing the campaigns and these projects are also passionate. It's a bunch of folks who believe in the good things that individuals uh, and groups of people are doing. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's different than, it, it wouldn't be the same if, if, if you had like, you know, for instance, uh, I don't know, Kellogg, saying, oh, we want to raise funds for this or that. No, you got people on the uh, grassroots who are trying to make change, uh, who have an idea, who have a vision, and they want uh, and they want all eyes on that vision, and they want that help to get to, to bring that to life. Um, you know, it, it, and that's, you know, that's why I really went to, I really kind of fell in love with the whole Kickstarter um, the idea is because it seemed like it fit. It seemed like it fit perfectly with what I wanted to achieve and and who I wanted to uh, spread this message to, like all those kinds of people. So that's really why it was uh, attractive to me. How did you promote your campaign? Well, uh, I promoted it uh, a few different ways and at at few di- at you know different times because you just can't, for instance, put it on Facebook and and hope for the best. Like you know, I did put it on Facebook. Um, I, I uh, you know, I, I promoted it there, shared it, contacted people that I knew would be crazy about this idea, let them know, and, and they were sharing it. And I spoke at this meeting downtown in, uh, that they hold monthly. It's called Games. It's, uh, it's an entrepreneurial type of mover shaker type of meeting where people all gather monthly to, you know, talk about maybe sustainability, placemaking, uh, a lot of progressive ideas. I, I spoke there and kind of spread the gospel about that a little bit there. Um, also, I had a had a first. There was a honey tasting uh, soul show um, that I had that I held at uh, um, Uncorked Wine Bar up there on High Street as a part of Musica. And uh, what I did was I had um, you know put out the invitations and got with this uh, another soul band. My and my band, uh, West Brighton Highlights, my saxophone player who's my good friend, his name is Nathan Davis. He's got his own soul band and uh um, you know, kind of soul funk funk band type thing going on and uh he and he uh joined forces with myself and just kindly backed me that night and after we had a, an official honey tasting, I had honey 
and biscuits, and uh, it was pretty good. And the biscuits were supplied by the Eye Opener in, in West Akron. Uh, but after that tasting, we uh, we played some soul songs and had a good time. So um, that was another one of the ways that, you know, kind of just got, got the word out. And, you know, we held a, another tasting at the, I think it was Square Fest, we, 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 uh, we, we were offered a, a space there and, you know, and that went over very well. So it, 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 it was a cool, it was a, uh, it was, it was a collection of a few different ways um, that we, that we did it. And it's, and it's funny, a lot of folks think that, you know, with Kickstarter, you, you just keep sharing and keep sharing it. Yes, you do, but you got to do it strategically. You can't do it too much. You can't do it in the same places. You have to, you have to, uh, you know, be come across as appealing and not needy, uh, and it'll work, and you do, you know, it wouldn't hurt to spend some money on it, too, you know, just you're printing out your flyers and boosting it on Facebook and, and whatnot. But, you know, that's pretty much how I got it done. Yeah, that honey and biscuit tasting, tasting that sounded pretty good. I mean, like, wow, I need some of that right now. But, uh, but yeah, that's a really good idea. It's a really good idea that, that even though it's online, you know, you still have to go out to the people to promote. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I missed one of the key, the key ways that I uh, – that I promoted it, which is also tied into what, you know, my future holds. Uh, I had this, uh, I held a mar- what we call a, what I call a market day at my apiary, which pretty much means I opened up the, I uh, opened up the gates and um, I built a, I retrofitted a retail space right inside the gates. And it was a real, real nice sunny day. I think it was like August 17th of uh, this year and um, earlier this year. And we sold honey straight from the, from the gates and, and uh, you know, we just had a lot of publicity, uh, you know, pointing to the Kickstarter, which really fueled the Kickstarter. Um, but people, I think, what people got to see that day, which is what really helped the Kickstarter, they saw this. Maybe they didn't realize it, but they saw this vacant piece of land that was just blighted. It was before before I bought it. It was just you know, it used to be a house. They tore it down. Now it's just a bunch of grass and weeds. And they saw that transform and and pretty much what we call activating a space they, they the space was activated and now it benefits not just one person but it was about 100 to 100 about 150 and upward of uh people who came through all day so and they're right in the neighborhood we shut down the street and uh you know we had uh, uh helena larios from the global village festival she was there um you know supplying produce so it, it really became a scene that day uh which is a really big part of what you know fueled the kickstarter as well yeah, I know Helena. She's wrecked my knees doing her vocal class. <laughs> oh, you know Helena? Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's, she's, she's, she does a great job with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're describing how you're how you're promoting your Kickstarter campaign, it it reminded me of you promoting a band. So, did your experience of being a musician and promoting concerts did that play a big part in you in promoting this campaign in the Akron Honey Company? Because that's what it sounds like. It sounds like you're promoting a band, and the band in question is the Akron Honey Company. Yeah, it, it you know I learned a lot from being uh, a part of you know Wesley writing the highlights uh, and playing with the, playing with the highlights I should say over the last three years. Um, uh, you know I've, I've learned how uh, to position one's own craft and one's own uh, entity, uh, and 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 you know not to overdo it, not to you know uh, uh, you know position yourself in a way that it may hurt you in the future and and. Uh, and I use that philosophy towards, you know, or with Akron Honey Company and, and my initiatives that I had going on, um, you know, but most of all, what made it easy is, is it was really something I believed in. And not to say that, you know, uh, my band, uh, the highlights who I play with, uh, who I front, not to say that I don't believe in that because I very much do, but this is something that, you know, um, you know, this is kind of, it is more of my own thing. It was pretty much me from the beginning doing a whole lot of a lot of uh, grunt work, a lot of uh, you know pulling the sleeves up and 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 getting getting down and dirty. And it was it's, it's, if anyone would know, it's much easier to to show off and to promote and to to yell at the top of the mountains about your own passion that that you know you've uh, invested so much sweat equity in rather than you know anything else. Well, when you're on stage, you're Wesley Bright. But yeah. the stuff you're doing with the Honey Company, that's Brett Wesley, family yeah. man, honey. They're both you, but the people that really want to know who you are, the urban farming is what you're doing. 
Yeah, you know, it's a little bit of everything. You know, I I guess I, I guess I've embraced more more now than ever that that I wear different hats. Uh, I used to get honestly, I used to get a little bit put off when folks came up to me and said, "Oh, you you know, is, is Wesley Bright a persona or this or that?" I'm like, "No, nah, not really. That's kind of how I act all the time." But I don't have an audience in front of me all the time, so you get a get a little bit. <laughs> it's not going to look the same. Um, but you know, being being in front of 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 people, I mean, that's with, with you know, it's not just with Wealthy Brighton Hollies, but Ack and Honey Company. It is all the same. I guess it, it it reminds me of the other all the time where, you know, I'm in I'm in front of folks. It's just a different audience. They're not here to you know, with the honey company, they're not here to, to to, you know, listen to music or hear me hear me sing some soul licks. They're they're here to uh, you know, maybe discover how, you know, what I'm doing and how it's benefiting the neighborhood or what's next and 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 you know, is this really something that I can brag to my friends about regarding living in Akron? Right. So getting back to Kickstarter for a second. So you requested a goal of eight thousand. Yes. And at the end of the day you almost doubled it. It showed that people are really into it, but were you surprised that you raised that much cash? You know, I, I, I was I was a bit surprised. I was more I guess I was more happy and I guess I was surprised because I was in disbelief a little bit. I, I you know, because one moment you know, you're struggling to get to half your goal. And the next moment, you surpassed it. And then the next day, next hour, you, you know, you're ready to double that. So it, it's, it's it, you know, it was uh, it was a bit surprising, uh, but it was doable because, you know, I'm a, I'm a person who thinks that if you, if you can, if you, if you can, you know, if you want to do something, you can. If you say you can, you will. If you say you can't, you won't. You know, if you, if you, I don't know, someone told me a, uh, a work friend of mine told me once, uh, I think he, I don't know if it was an actual Chinese proverb, but if a man says he can climb a mountain, he will climb the mountain. If he says he can't, he won't. So, I mean, I, I live by that every day and just, and just think, and I'm, I'm very, th- I mean, I'm thankful for all the folks who supported, um, you know, the, my honey company thus far and just me. Cause I, I know that a lot of them, they're, they're investing their, their, their money and their time in, in me and, 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 and trusting that I'm going to do the right thing with, with the funds that they contributed, and uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm forever thankful for that. I mean, this isn't something that's going to be here for the next three years. I'm, I'm, you know, this is going to be around for a long time, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it really is for it's it's for the the city of Akron. Uh, as far as the company, if people don't know much about the Akron, how how would if people were coming from out of town and they saw the name of Akron Honey Company, what was the best way you would describe it? Well, I would just describe it as follows. Uh, you know, Akron Honey Company is we harvest urban honey in small batches so that uh, you experience it much like you experience wine in uh, different varieties and flavors based on, you know, what's growing in the urban neighborhood throughout the year. Um, we, you know, we're urban honey company. That's it. And when it comes to honey, there's different types of taste when it comes to honey. It's not all just the same taste. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I'm not, I'm not, never going to position myself as a connoisseur, but you know, just like you know, a lot of other people, even by yourself, I love food and I love how it tastes. Um, I never knew, I never knew how different honey tastes, um, you know, based on different factors, and you know, and, and you've got, you've got that element, but then you've got the element where you're in the urban setting where. You know, in the country, you know, where where a lot of hives are, you know, out in California and the almond, you know, almond fields, they uh, the bees are eating one one type of crop. So like the almond in almond season, they're they're mostly pollinating almonds. So you're going to get the honey that tastes, you know, the same. Um, and and the bees are just eating one type of type of uh, I guess crop. Uh, you know, from you know they're eating nectar from one type of crop. So you know the, the nutritional value isn't you know the best. They don't have the variety here in in the city. You know you've got like in Highland Square, all the neighbors are growing different types of flowers that the bees are on. Um, even you know I see mint growing all over the place, and I see and I even have mint in my in my apiary in my bee yard, and they're not supposed to be you know working those uh, working those mint bushes, but I actually saw them and. And I mean, for instance, uh, earlier in the in the year, they uh, they produced this honey that was very 
It was very light and transparent, but it was almost citrusy in taste. Two months later, not even two months later, it was it was it was much darker and it was from the same highs and it was just because different flowers are blooming and different trees are in bloom. Um, and it's, it's, I can only, I can only verbalize so much as, as regarding the taste. You, you got to kind of try it yourself, but it's, but a lot of folks don't realize once again, that, that honey is so much like wine where, you know, you've got red wine, white wine, Cabernet, all sorts of different kinds. I mean, it, 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 folks, do, you know, owe it to themselves to try a more artisanal honey, and you know that's what I do. That's what I'm bringing to life in Akron. What have you learned about yourself since you started the honey company? I've learned that I have to, I have to be. Um, although I thought I was quite comfortable with ambi- uh, ambiguity, uh, like this uncertainty, I I need to grow more comfortable with uncertainty. Um, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, you, you think you have a strength, but, you know, it, it turns out to be an opportunity. So uh, that's one of the things. Another another piece is, you know, I I like, I don't know, I like being out in, in nature and, and being out and, and just making things better. And, and I like working for myself. I got, I've realized that I really, because I don't know if it's, if it's a thing that has, has something to do with my age, but I just really love working for myself. Um, and something that I really believe in. Uh, I work I work 12 hours throughout the day if I need to, but as long as I can come back and do this, I'll keep going, you know, just because that fuels me. So, you know, I've learned that, you know, I, I that I have a, a social responsibility to do this. And I've learned that I have a, um, you know, a an economic responsibility to do this for my city. Uh, you know, so I am, I am learning a whole lot, a lot about myself. And I like the fact that you, I think I've read that you want to work with Akron Public Schools to kind of get more kids involved with beekeeping and actually getting more, more minorities involved with beekeeping because there's a lack of youth and minorities when it comes to the beekeeping or the honey industry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We don't, we don't know much at all. I mean, it's not – I don't, I don't know if it's a, you know, it has something to do with demographic or area culture, but, you know, I, I, there is a, there's a drought of, of – um, you know, minorities in agriculture, and and is that a huge problem? I don't, I don't know. That's a huge problem, but it's a, it's an area that you know is worthy of of uh, improvement. Um, you know, as far as you know, and I, and I let me let me take that back. I think it's pretty necessary <laughs> because a lot of these kids don't know where food comes from. Uh, you know, I even asked my daughter uh, about seven months ago, I just, you know, I never talked to her about this, but I asked her, I said, hey, hey, Bella, what is, uh, where does this milk come from? Where does the, these eggs come from? She's like, you know, Acme. <laughs> and I was like, no. I said, no, it doesn't come from Acme. So, she, you know, there was a, there's a gap in understanding, and, and that has to do with exposure to it. A lot of, I mean, Akron has got some pretty quite profound food deserts where you can't find it's easier to find something that'll, you know, sit in you for all, you know, you eat it and it's bad for you rather than something that is, comes comes from the earth and is good for you. Uh, and I believe as the, you know, as the generations get older and, um, you know, the new generation comes up, that it, it's important to have them, uh, you know, instill that understanding in them so that they can make better choices uh, for themselves and, and, you know, not be so naive as far as your food system is concerned. I want to ask you one music question. It's music related, kind of. I interviewed Maurice Martin from Winslow a while back, yeah. and I asked him because he, you know, because he he has a job and he has a band, and I asked him about practicing. It's like, how do you guys squeeze in practice? Because they're Winslow's a really good band, um, yeah. but they all got day jobs. So I guess yeah. I have to ask you the same question because I mean, your Wesley Bryan the highlights are really popular, and you have yeah. your company that you really love, and you also have your family. So yeah. how do you just decide how, when to practice, what time to practice, because you have a lot of different responsibilities, especially since you love all three, family, music, and your company. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. First of all, man, uh, I got to give props to the, you mentioned Maurice. Uh, yeah. Man, Mo, he, he hustles, man. I, I, I've i known him for, for, you know, I'd have to say about, oh my goodness, like six years I've known, I've known him, and even more intimately over the last Three years I've known him. Four years I know him very well, and and 
I got this. I was just talking to him a few months ago uh, at his place, and he's he's great. So I, I give a shout out to him, man. He's he's great. Um, you know, but it, it finding time for all this, you just don't think about it. You just go, and if you sit if you if you sit around, if I were to sit around and, and you know just think. You know, you know about the different angles of my schedule. It, it would just kind of, it probably would, it would, it would wear down on me. But you know, I, like I said before, I have a wonderful wife who, who's been, you know, who's been the reason why I can do what I do. I know a lot of gentlemen who, you know, in their relationships, they wouldn't necessarily be able to just to be in a band. I mean, I'm, I'm in a band. I mean, it's a big commitment, and you know, especially with a family, let alone being single. So, you know. You put that there, and then you got the honey company too, where that's a time investment. Um, you know, so it's it, it, it's it's just doing what you can when you can do it. And I guess that's the, I guess that's one of the things of being an entrepreneur, which is you know it's a reality, but it's also good because you have the flexibility to do, you know, what you want when you want to do it. And uh, I usually ask this question to most of my guests, but um, so what type of apps and gadgets do you like? <laughs> well, the only t- <laughs> the only time I find myself, you know, immersed in technology is when I'm at work. So I mean, I I like those little the, the drones that they have. It's, 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 I think it's a Finnish company called um, it's Parrot. They uh, or maybe even Swedish. They uh, they they manufacture these these remote control drones that you know either fly or you know, travel by ground, and you can do, you can control them with your uh, mobile device, whether it's a tablet, or, you know, or a smartphone. And I mean, I like I like those. I really. Otherwise, I'm not really. I mean, I got a tablet too. I should. I guess I should include that. I, I do a whole lot on my tablet, so um, I use a Samsung tablet. It's a, it's a pretty nice one. And uh, um, you know, besides that, you know, I, we're not. You know, I'm not a really a gadget guy. Uh, if I didn't work in a tech in the in the tech field, I I probably have a flip phone. Um, you know, we don't even <clears throat> like we're pretty simple at my house here, and uh, you know, we don't even have cable or anything. We we just you know keep it as simple as possible. And uh, you know, in my in my opinion, the, the gadgets are a huge convenience to us. It's definitely convenient, and and it it, it you know it 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 turns hours and days of work into maybe minutes of work. You know, it, it does bring people together when you look at how easily we can communicate. I can now send a message to someone across the the ocean in, you know, seconds instead of, you know, sending a sending a uh, a letter or whatever. But at the same time you, you gotta you gotta manage it right because otherwise it just turns into a distraction, uh distracting you from what's in front of you, you know, the person, that connection you can make in, in person with somebody. So uh, I like gadgets, but you gotta <laughs> you gotta res- you gotta respect how they work, and you gotta you gotta just you know respect the the original connection like between people. You know, it would be kind of interesting if like, if one day I'm looking outside and I see a drone with a jar of honey dropping in. <laughs> in <my> home. <laughs> oh man, you spoiled my secret. That's next year, man. That's next year. Oh, I can't wait. Look at what's that in the sky. That's my honey coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right. I actually joked around with somebody. They, uh, they're making fun of my, of I don't know, me in a bee outfit, and and I and I made sure that uh, it was actually Malcolm. It was Malcolm Abrams. He was uh, he kind of joked around. He lives in my community too, and he says uh, you know, you know, talking about me in my bee outfit, whatever. And I and I say, well, that's okay. I'll I go ahead and send you know, about 20 of my, my best bees to welcome you to, to my, um, you know, Akron Honey Company as in, you know, going to attack them. But, you know, he uh, you know, he was a kind of keep it <laughs> lighthearted. But, uh, yeah, yeah, man, it, it's, it's, it's a very – it's a funny thing. It's like a lot of times you know, I can't even – I can't really, you know, believe what's happening right now. I was just – I was just now talking to somebody right before I left work this evening, and um, – I was I was eagerly letting him know everything that's happening and and a lot of it yeah is because of this Kickstarter uh, now that I'm able to do but it's a lot of this is unbelievable for me still. Uh, it really is. Well, Brett Wesley, thank you for the conversation. If you want to learn more about the Acton Honey Company or or your band or where can they go? All right, you can go to uh, AkronHoney.com is the, the the website for the honey. 
You can find me on Facebook at AkronHoneyCompany.com. Now, uh, my soul band, the Wesley Brighton the Highlights, we, uh, you can find us on Facebook at Wesley Brighton the Highlights. We, uh, uh, there's an album coming out, too. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a, a big time, our first album, and, uh, and we'll be around doing the thing. So I, I thank you, Kevin, for your time and, and, and reaching out and everything. I really appreciate it. Is that the Heidi Ho label uh, records that you guys are doing? Is that, was that it? Yeah. yeah Heidi Ho is our label. Um, we do have a single that's out and, Evidently, somebody in the UK got a hold of it, and and I don't, I have no clue what what the uh, what's going on, but they're about buying a whole lot of them over there. Yeah, I read that that you know that you were on a tour or someplace, and the band was requested to go to the UK. That's yeah, actually, like, yeah, that's really good cross promoting if you take the honey with you to the UK. That's like that happens <laughs> you to the European, <laughs> the European market. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they can, you can buy the honey and the album together for a reduced cost, I don't know, or inflated cost, whatever. <laughs> See, that's that Prince thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Solomon Burke did that, too. He used to, he used to I think he was sold, like, uh, chicken uh, or some sort of food item during his shows, like before and after his shows, Solomon Burke did, as I read in the past. Well, you guys are a retro band, so I guess I guess everything's going to be retro then. Oh, yeah, everything. <laughs> all right. But thanks a lot, Brett. Thank you so much. You, you have a wonderful day, all right? Uh, you too. Thanks. All right. I want to thank Brent and Wesley for being a great guest on The Digital Life. Make sure you check out the Akron Honey Company at Facebook.com backslash Akron Honey Company. That's Facebook.com backslash Akron Honey Company or follow them on Twitter at Akron Honey. And also be sure to check out Wesley Bright in the highlights at Facebook.com backslash Wesley Bright and the highlights. That's facebook.com backslash Wesley Bright and the highlights. Before I go, I have a Twitter question for you. Tweet me at Kevin Lockett and tell me which Kickstarter, GoFundMe, or Indiegogo project you have backed. Use the hashtag KL Crowd. That's the hashtag KL Crowd. And tell me about the crowdsourcing project you recently backed. All right, everybody. It's the Digital Life. I'm Kevin Lockett, and I'm out. The Digital Life with Kevin Lockett. 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 Lockett.